Well, good evening. My name is Heike Demster. I'm the Associate Director for Public Relations and Outreach at Young Arts. My pronouns are she, her. Young Arts Campus is situated on the traditional homeland of Native nations, including the Tequesta, the Calusa, the Taino, and today, the Mikusuki and the Seminole. We pay our respects to the elders past, present, and future, and recognize their continued existence and contributions to our community. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening for this info session dedicated to the photography discipline at Young Arts. Young Arts identifies exceptional young artists, amplifies their potential and invests in their lifelong creative freedom. And the Young Arts experience really starts with the national competition. So we want to encourage all artists aged 15 to 18 or in grades 10 to 12 to apply and become part of the Young Arts community. Uh, once selected, all award winners are offered a lifetime of artistic support and ongoing connections with a network of peers and mentors. So before we begin, I just have a few housekeeping notes. The session, as you just heard, is being recorded because there are some people who may not be able to join tonight and I still want to learn all there is to know to prepare for their um, application. So if you want to ask a question and you want to protect your privacy, just switch your name to first name only and also verbally just introduce yourself on a first name basis. Um, you can use, you can drop um, questions in the chat at any time. You can raise your hand. Please use all those features. We will answer everything as we go along. Um, so now let, it's my pleasure really to welcome my colleague Nidra Ward, Associate Director of Winner Programs at Young Arts and photography panel chair Corinne Botts and Carlos Hernandez, who are both past Young Arts Award winners. Corinne Botts is a visual artist and educator, a sustained focus on space, gender, and the body, particularly relating to women experiences, is central to her practice. Her published books combining her photography and writing include the nutshell studies of unexplained death and haunted houses. Botts photography, oh sorry, Botts photographs have been internationally exhibited at institutions such as the Brooklyn Museum, Museum of Contemporary Photography in Chicago, Württembergische Kunstverein in Stuttgart, Germany, the Apo in Amsterdam, Turner Contemporary in the UK, and Ben Ruby Gallery in New York City. Her Oscar qualifying short film, Bedside Manor, won the Grand Jury Prize at DOC New York, and she has held residencies at Skowhegan School of Painting and Sculpture, Atlantic Center for the Arts, Academie Schloss Solitude, Lower Manhattan Cultural Council and MANA Contemporary. Botts is the recipient of both the New York Foundation for the Arts and the Jerome Foundation grants. Carla Hernandez is a Dominican United States artist, curator, photo editor, and organizer based in the New York metropolitan area. The work of the artistic practice currently focuses on notions of identity and the uplifting of black, brown, and queer voices through conceptual explorations of oppressive histories. Most recently, they curated Hold Release, Queer Formations in Photography, a collection of works at, um, sorry, on Art Fair. Their art and writing has been published in White War Magazine, Art and Type Mag, Black Swan Magazine, and ISO Magazine. Hernandez has exhibited across the United States at the Montclair Art Museum, Sotheby's Auction House, and Young Arts. Most recently, he was named a 2021 Hispanic Scholarship Fund and Gilman International Scholar. Hernandez is currently pursuing a BFA in photography and, and imaging at NYU Tisch with a double major in social and cultural analysis. So now you have a little bit of information on our speakers tonight. So I'll pass on the mic to Corinne. Thank you so much. Hi, thank you so much for the introductions. I'm very excited to be here and to meet all of you and hopefully Every, all the students here are eligible and we'll be seeing your portfolio this fall. Um, so yeah, we wanna talk about the application, um, the Young Arts Program, the Young Arts Week, and then um, the program sort of overall. And excited to be here with Carlos and um, let's keep this kind of casual so and conversational. So we invite you to ask questions um, in the chat as we go move along. Um, all right, so first let's, um, if we can, I'll just put in the chat um, the, if someone else wants to, the requirements um, for photography. And I'm not gonna go over like everything. So please read it carefully on your own, but I do wanna point out some important things. So 
first of all, look at you know the images and what type of files that we want. Um, you don't want to upload giant files, but you want to make sure you have those files for those images, because if you're chosen, there'll be an exhibition and we'll need the high res files for printing your work. Um, so as you can see, there's um, for the portfolio, it's 10 images and it's from either one unified body of work or a series or two, a set of um, two sets of five from two unified bodies of work or series. This is new this year. So in the past, we had you had the option of like putting two unified series in, but you could also do one unified series and five sort of ranges of photographs. And looking at it over the years, most people went with the five and they kind of ended up being almost random. And we felt like it was a disservice to the applications um, that sometimes the five, the series were really strong and the other five didn't really tell us about that person's vision. It was sort of like, it's not like a show pony where you have to show us everything you can do, right? We want to see something that's more concise and single photos are important, but in photography, it's really about building up those images to make a series. And that's what we want to see. So you could put, again, one series of 10 or two solid series of um, five. And we usually have like a range of work that's accepted, um, you know, people doing work about personal identity, um, family, portraits, landscape, street photography, collages, alternative processes, because um, that's the nature of photography, right? Um, it comes in all these different, um, there's, there's all these different ways of working. Um, but I think the main thing is it feeling sort of a distinct voice um, and you know, true to yourself. And there has to be thought behind it. And that's where the artist statement comes in. The artist statement's really important. Like when we go through these applications, we pay, a, we really look closely and we read the artist statements. And there have been like a few instances in the past where someone had a great portfolio and they like didn't do the statement or they put like one sentence and that sort of, we really need to know your intention in photography, like where you're coming from. Um, in terms of, the statement, um, you know, what is your point of view? What questions are you grappling with with your work? Um, what are you trying to communicate? Why isn't your work important? Like, why should we care about your work? Why do you care about your work? You don't have to worry about art speak in your statement. You know, if you want to mention the medium of photography and how you relate to it overall, that's great. Or if there's any influences that you have in terms of the tradition of photography. Um, that's always nice to hear, but um, really we wanna understand the work in your portfolio better. And that's what that statement is for. We wanna understand you, know, you as an artist more. Um, and in terms of photography, I think I'm just gonna go backtrack a little bit and then I'll pass it over to Carlos where he'll show you his portfolio. But um, like, we definitely don't wanna see, I'm trying to think like, we don't have, it's more artistic. Like we don't want to have like wildlife photos that are shot in Nat Geo way, or um, I don't know, like really fashion oriented pictures that are just about taking pretty pictures, right? So there has to be some meaning behind it and concept and conceptual photographs are always um, something that we're, we respond to. Um, so just yeah, keep that in mind. Um, we prefer it not being an assignment for school. We really want to know like what you're interested in as opposed to like fulfilling an assignment for a class. Um, but of course, when you're doing your portfolio, it is really great to show it to other people. So if you have teachers at your school that you can work with to help do the edit, it's hard to like be objective when you're looking at your own work. So it's really great to have other eyes on it and have other people giving you feedback about the flow, about you know, which pictures to include, which pictures not to include. So we highly recommend getting feedback from, from teachers or, or friends that you respect. Um, and let's, let's look at some, you know, successful portfolios that we accepted. Um, Carlos, I'd love to hear about, um, you know, your process of applying and how you made your choices. You had such an exceptional portfolio. Was it really easy an easy selection <laughs> to pick you. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah 
Uh, so, I mean, I definitely would like to say that I came into the young arts like application process with a good amount of support, which really I think made my application successful. Um, I had just finished, I had heard about young arts the year before um, for the first time and it had been introduced to me. Um, and at the time I had just really like started to gain a grasp of what photo was, but I didn't have enough to do a portfolio. And so the reality of it was that I wasn't ready to apply. <laughs> and so I was lucky enough that I was young um, and didn't need to apply then and there. So I waited a year um, and during that year, I took a couple of photo classes um, because I had a little, you know, job as a high school student um, and uh, took some like we can call uh, high school classes where I really ended up like finding um, an understanding of photography that wasn't just like it would have been in a high school setting because the instructors are really committed towards conceptualizing art um, through photography, through the lens. And so in thinking about what does it mean to make art, what does it mean to um, use the like image as a tool? Um, and I had gone to a vocational high school um, where I was studying film and like video specifically with graphic design and like we had rotated throughout these classes. So I had a lot of exposure um, to different arts practices um, then. So like lots of, you know, privilege and, and acts as an opportunity to sort of getting to try out different mediums and like finding out that like, why do I like photography? Oh, it's because it's my ability to conceptualize this, this moment in time and give it intention and, and the way it, that it felt like it was the most natural mode that I could do it in or like the easiest thing that came to me. And so um, it sort of was like having this visual language was sort of something that was always there because I had to seek out opportunities when it came to actually making images. And um, when it came to putting together a portfolio for photo, I had a teacher who had gone to school for photography directly. And he was the one who had introduced me to Young Arts to begin with at my high school um, because he had been exposed to it within his like professional life as an educator. And um, after that, he like saw what I had, you know, produce essentially the summer before my senior year in high school um, because I had taken, uh, you know, a lot of like photo classes throughout the past years, but I was sort of like, what do I want to make it? I needed to understand what that was. And I had just finished making like bodies of work that were dealing with things that I never thought that photography could deal with because I never understood photo to be so deeply intertwined with my emotional, social, like political experience. And um, I, I had gone to photo talks and, and stuff like that that had really sort of shown me like, this is what I have when it comes to photography. This is why it's a tool. This is why I wanna use it. Um, and this is why this career means more to me than just like making pretty images. <laughs> because I had come into photography as a fashion photographer. This is, you know, I grew up in the era of Instagram. I was 11 with an Instagram and was scrolling across beautiful fashion images. And for me, like coming into queerness, fashion was very much something that I was um, it, like engaging with in my daily life. Um, and I think that that led me to, to look at photography with such a fondness within the aesthetics, but then that's where the, you know, other stuff came about when I started to see photography as a tool more than just aesthetics. Um, and so I think that that's what shows in my portfolio is that I, I really thought of photography as how do I represent these issues, whether it be like my own experience and things that I've experienced in terms of my um, like experience as an immigrant, whether it means to be Afro-Dominican, whether it means to be um, queer, like these you know, tangible experiences, how did I use the tool to discuss these subjects and um, what was it about my approach that made them all come together? I think you see that I'm really committed to intersectional um, activism and I'm really committed towards doing that through beautiful aesthetics. <laughs> and that's what photo is about for me. Um, so that's how I came up with my portfolio. <laughs> Great, and we, can we pull that up? Should I talk a little bit about, give some context that I would have um, the descriptions? Yeah, why don't you just, like, so you did um, one series of five, right? So why don't you just describe yeah. the series of five overall? Oh, it's so, so great to see 
work again, Carlos. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so this series of five uh, was really about me coming to terms with the conceptions of what my family expected of me versus who I was becoming, um, coming into this like manhood, if you will, uh, because as someone who's gender nonconforming, I've always felt this tension within my Dominicanity and what it means to be like a man or, or live in this male body. And so that was really about uh, trying to get a grasp of like what it meant for me to not fit, you know, my parents' expectations of me. Um, and it came through a lot when it came, like I discussed, it was, it was really fashion was where I understood my gender. And so that's really what speaks through a lot of these works is that what I'm wearing, what I'm not wearing, like this image is entitled baptism. And, and I'm really sort of looking to uh, resonate with this concept of like what it meant for me to be baptized and also feeling like I need to do it over and over again because it felt like this queerness was something that I had to cleanse of my body in order to feel fully um, embraced within my culture. Um, something like expectations, it was, it's really about fe like feeling like this and, and really like I'm, I love satire. I love like putting things like blankly on an image. Like this is exactly what you think. It's fitting me in a box and it's like, what do I do in this box? Like I opened it. I don't know. I'm going to like, I, it's that like young thought. And I think that's what I really, and you know, you can really go about it in a pretty like talk no oh, connection is unstable um <laughs> um but you can really go about it and like uh what are these experiences let me write them down and let me think about what are the visuals that come up and that arise and how do i make that um because that's what it was for me yeah and i'll just mention um you know as you see in those five pictures um they really feel like they all go together you know there are series of self-portraits and I think the symbolism that Carlos mentioned is like very clear we could see what he was like grappling with and trying to understand through those images but technically they are also really well done right they're all black and white I wouldn't want to see like one color thrown into if you have five pictures let's keep it consistent right um so you know the exposure is great the contrast looks great the focus um we're also looking at all those technical things in photography as well, um, which Carlos did a great job with. Um, and these are your, and again, the next five are more like just a range of pictures and that's not part of the application anymore, but we still wanna see what your five are. <laughs> yeah, and these were like, I think when I understood this section back then, it was like, it was the breath and I was told to like show as much of my range as much as I, you know, could do with while still sticking to what my intentions are within photo. And I think mm -hmm. that that's what made them like work, hopefully. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you're, um, you're, you're a young arts winner, <laughs> absolutely. And again, like I mentioned before, it's kind of blurry, right? I mentioned this idea of like fashion and we don't want to just see like all pretty pictures of the statement just saying that you, you love fashion photography. But of course, like, you know, we're, photographers today are inspired by fashion and Instagram and all of that. So it's Tyler Mitchell. There's a ton of people who also work in art and they also shoot fashion and it's just, um, so it can be blurry, but we do, the main thing is it needs to go beyond a pretty picture. If you have pretty pictures of flowers or food, not so good, but if there's food and it's like exploring ethnicity and other issues through food or through still life, that's great. Right. So there has to be just another layer. And, um, I think with your first five pictures, we we knew it was there. <laughs> you know, it was very clear. Beautiful lighting. And then this was an awesome one. I mean, this picture, in a way, it's kind of sneaky. You got like 10 extra pictures in in your last Oops. in your last one. Um, but it really works. I mean, sometimes like Guys. people grab, you know, you kind of are doing an application. You're like, can I just make this into a triptych? I mean, don't do it unless like in, in Carlos's instance, it really does feel like a piece um but it's great I had it, intention exactly exactly well, this was one of the like things that I had been most proud of too at that age and like I was really excited and it was hard because this wasn't just one to five images um and I had never also like shown it separately so I was like why can't I just I'm just gonna submit it all together so 
Glad it worked. <laughs> Definitely worked. And someone's asking if we accept triptychs and diptychs. Yes, like absolutely. But um, again, it has to be intentional. I think we'll see it. We had someone last year who had a series of diptychs and triptychs and it was great. Um, but make sure you're not just putting it together to get an extra picture in because that is going to come through. <laughs> but yes, that's really accepted. Um, Nirder, can you pull up the other portfolio? So we wanted to show you one more portfolio, I think. Um, and again, like the work we accept is so wide ranging in terms of approaches to photography. So don't at all feel like you're going to make a portfolio like these. I wouldn't want to show them if that's how I thought this was, um, you know, coming across, but um, I think it is helpful to see what a successful portfolio looks like. Um, this is one from from last year. Um, um, anyhow, so this is um, Raisa and she did a project exploring her father, but she used her whole family in this. So it's image and text. It was very bold because she's one of the few people who did one project for all 10 images. We don't see that that often, um, but we didn't question her decision at all because it's such solid work. Um, we're, the tap, yeah, you can just scroll down. So she uses her, it's telling her father's story, working with him as a storyteller. You know, you can see a really great compositions, like thinking about documentary tradition, but also thinking about cinema and like film in this work. Um, and the text is great. She uses her brother as a stand in her, her brothers as stand ins for her father throughout his life. So I just love how she uses it's like a whole family. Um, using all different family members to make this work. And you can also see it's like very deep and personal exploring her father's story. And he also is a photographer, which I believe in the statement she talks about, like even using the camera or just their relationship and how he led her to photography. Um, so again, this is an example of one portfolio of just one series, all image and text. Um, if you guys are able to read the text a little bit as we go through. And so, you know, in terms of editing, every project is different. There should be, you should put thought into the sequence of your pictures for sure. I mean, it's not like every picture, like every, every like this one really has more of a beginning, middle and end. It's more of a traditional story in that way. But a lot of times that's not gonna be the case in photography. Um, and so you might want to think about, you know, what that introductory picture is, what's the first picture that brings us into your story. Um, and you want them all to be strong, but you also, you don't want to have it be like too repetitive. You know, every, every project, every editing project is different. So um, hopefully you just like really work with sequencing, get feedback on it. Um, but you want to put your best work, work forward for sure. Um, any any other questions about the about the application? Hopefully, it's helpful to show some winning applications. Carlos, it was so great to see that work again. I'll just talk a little bit about um, eligibility for applying to Young Arts. So, um, on December first of the year you're applying, so that would be this year. Uh, on December first, you would have to be between the ages of fifteen to eighteen, or in grades ten through twelve. And that or means you have to be one or the other. You don't necessarily have to be both. If you are both, great. Um, but if you don't meet the age, but you meet the grade, you are still eligible to apply and vice versa. Um, the other eligibility requirement is that you must be uh, a, a US citizen, a US permanent resident, or eligible to receive taxable income. And that basically means that you are here in the United States with a US social security number. Um, so if you have any of those three, you are also eligible to apply to the program. Um, the application closes October 14th at 11.59 PM Eastern. So that's 8.59 PM Pacific. Um, please, please make sure that if you are on the other coast, it is an Eastern time. <laughs> um, and uh, right after application close, we really get started with the adjudication process. Um, for photography, there are multiple levels of the adjudication process, and Corinne is on the digital, um, and that is where 
the final round for photography. Uh, they gather around. Typically, we're in Miami, but in the last couple of years, we've been virtual thanks to COVID. Um, and uh, they come together to determine awards um, during that time. And getting to that round is um, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be awarded. Um, but you that is the round that uh, the panel determines awards. And those awards are finalists, honorable mentions, and merits. Um, and I will talk a little bit about finalists um, and then pass it off to Corinne to talk a little bit about Young Arts Week as well. Um, but just know that all three levels are winners. There is different opportunities and different programs um, for finalists, but all of them are considered winners and there are opportunities for all, all three levels. Um, so finalists are capped for uh, attending National Young Arts Week in January. And that is usually around 10, 11, 12. Um, sometimes we give a little extra, <laughs> um, but it is around there for the cap for finalists. And then honorable mentions and merits are unlimited. So there are no caps for those two levels. Um, and then I'll pass it back off to Corinne to talk about Young Arts Week. Okay, yeah. And I also wanted to just mention people are asking about like, um, or about the judging. Um, so again, as Nirda mentioned, there's two rounds of judging. Um, usually there's like past few years, it's been five to 600 portfolios that are entered. And then the final three panelists, and that changes like who is a panelist that year. I've been a panelist for about six years, um, I believe. And um, so it's me and three other people. And we have usually like a hundred portfolios that we look at and we all look at them and we spend like two days looking at them and going through them. And then sometimes we're like fighting for the person that we, people we want to bring. Cause you know, you're thinking about, yeah, you don't always agree, but um, cause the work is so strong. Right. So we really just like talk it through, look at it carefully, go over every application. It's very thorough. Um, but it's really the hunt about a hundred that we focus on and the panelists change. Um, but like, let, um, last year, Eleanor Carucci was a panelist um, and Kat Jimenez as well. And um, yeah, any other questions about, oh, are all categories of photography accepted? For example, photojournalism and telling a story through culture. Yeah, I mean, we definitely have, like I mentioned, there's like, I would say maybe documentary would be the word I would use over photojournalism because I think photojournalism is like a little bit more about you know accompanying like an article or a story like in a magazine I think of documentaries having a little bit more room for artistic um vision in it so to speak um but you could look you could tell a story through culture absolutely you could look at and we have people who've done street photography in different places that have also been accepted in the past uh, I've lived in America Okay, so not one for me, <laughs> that question. Um, okay, um, anyone else have any questions before we move on to Young Arts Week? Okay, um, so yeah, if you're selected as a finalist, um, as Nerdra said, there's usually 10, I think 10, maybe a little bit more, 11 or 12 finalists, you're flown to Miami, and it's really just an amazing jam-packed week. There are master classes, throughout the week with the panelists and also we invite master artists to come. Um, in the past, it's included India Beal, uh, David Hilliard, on my lay, um, Paul Moakley. We have, and so we do shoot, shooting field trips like in Miami. Sometimes we're doing like exercises that are shorter. We are photographing on campus. Um, and other times we're going to specific locations and there'll be an assignment, like say Vizcaya, there'll be an assignment surrounding that. And a lot of times those assignments are kind of related to that person, that artist's work, right? And the way that they work. So they kind of use their work as a springboard to give you an exercise. Um, so you're shooting throughout the week, but Young Arts is, you know, very interdisciplinary. And the amazing thing is you're gonna be meeting people who are just as passionate and obsessed and committed to all these different mediums and disciplines. And so musicians and dancers and filmmakers and visual artists and 
throughout the week, you'll be going to different performances um, and you'll be getting, to, there'll be some um, interdisciplinary sessions with other disciplines. So you get to know all of these different artists from all around the country that will become like your community. And at the end of the week, there's an exhibition for photography and visual arts and design. And that's really exciting. There's a curator who will talk to you about like how they selected your work for the exhibition. And you'll see your work framed, you know, produced on the wall. Um, this is coming from the application that you applied and submitted, um, that you applied with. And um, yeah, so I mean, I did do Young Arts, but it was like back in 1995. So, you know, the spirit is the same, but it's a long time ago, some things have changed. So Carlos, do you wanna talk um, a little bit about your experience of Young Arts Week? Yeah, um, oh my God, a lot. It was everything, it was so much. It's like the longest week of your life when you're 18. And it's but also the it, shortest, right? It, it is the shortest life. month of your whole, like it's a month but it's like, you live so much, you experience so much. No, genuinely. Um, I mean, I think it's like, especially being in a group of like artists who are so committed to their craft. And like, it's not just like the photo people that you're with, but it's this like at large arts community that is so like, I don't know, I think one of the most special things that like happened was like at the end of each day, you would come back from like, the show of a certain discipline and you just welcome them with like a round of applause like that's like an iconic thing to me because it's like look at this artist community fully supporting each other for the sake of like themselves and like just like i don't know i think it's really hard to like find spaces where you can make art or like talk about art just because you love art and you're so committed to the craft and like this is one of those spaces where like the whole week you're just it's essentially a program built around the fact that you are committed to this. And so like, hey, let's give you resources that expand your understanding of it. Um, whether that's like having all of the different master artists come, whether that's us doing an activity with like 20 people in a room between the like RAs and like the DCs, like the discipline coordinators. And we're all doing like a photo editing thing to like talk to us about what photo editing is within photography and how that like played even into like adjudication or like, I don't know, certain things like that. Like they're just, I don't know, we, I, I did Young Arts Nationals finalists, but and then there's also like regionals, which even if you're not a finalist, you have the ability to maybe do regionals. And like, that is also like an amazing experience because it's just, it's really about being in this space where you're like surrounded by other artists and you get a week to just think, talk, breathe art and like, whether that's like, how do you go about the rest of your life doing this? Which I certainly was like, how do you guys do this to everyone that I met? Because like, how do we have arts careers beyond like high school, beyond college? Like what is a post-grad art? Like, what does it look like to practice? Um, and really like getting mentors like is incredible. Like, like never will you be in a room that is so open to like mentor you and like give you support and resources like godsend. I do just want to add on to that, Carlos, because something else has also changed since you were a winner. And that is we are not doing regional programs in the same way that we used to. Um, being that we were virtual for the last two years, we are aiming to be back in person <laughs> for next year, 2023. We will, we will, we will. Um, but we are doing a brand new program that uh, is called process intensive. Um, and for the first year back in person, we are only doing one. Um, but the goal is to expand back to the other cities where we had regional programs as well, and many more. Um, and so process intensive is uh, more of a, it's more of a shorter program. So it's kind of like a long weekend instead of five you know, five days as it was for regionals. Um, and it's all about collaboration. It's all about um, 
grouping together with uh, other disciplines and really creating something that may not be a finished work at the end of the program, but something that you can take with you and continue to work on and continue to collaborate and to continue to build upon. Um, so look out for that. And that is also for all levels of winners um, as it was for, for regional programs. Um, and then hopefully in 2024, we'll add another city and in 2025, we'll add another city and we'll get back to those um, cities that we had with regional programs in the past. But I did just want to touch base on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, just kind of picking, backing off what Carlos was saying about the importance of community. I mean, there is financial support and of course everyone has like goals. A lot of people are thinking about college and how they'll pay for it. So getting money can be like very helpful, but um, it really is like the community that is going to be the thing that you'll find most fulfilling. Um, and, and it's not just Young Arts Week. Um, that's what makes Young Arts such a unique organization because I've done so many residencies and so many different programs and there's just like literally not one other. Usually it's like you do it and then it's kind of it. And there's never any like chance of getting more money again down the road. <laughs> like, with, so Young Arts just keeps supporting you throughout your whole life. And I can really like attest to this. Um, I've had so many amazing opportunities through Young Arts. Um, I did an exhibition at Baxter Street Camera Club in New York City, which they give to an alum every year. Um, there's something called, is it Young Arts Post? Is that what it's called, Deirdre? Okay, yeah. so Young Arts Post where, you know, anyone, who, so merit, honorable mention, and winners are all part of that right here yeah yep. so you're all part of this community and you can go on and there's like all sorts of opportunities residencies micro grants i've gotten two micro grants per projects through young arts to help support them um and you're a panelist <laughs> and a panelist and you know, i just keep making more and more like friendships and relationships <laughs> and it's incredible you know just to see, i mean just to see the applications every year it's like just so inspiring and amazing to see what people are, what's, you know, these young people around the country who are really like going to be, you know, the next leaders in art, like what they're thinking about, what they're exploring in their work. Um, so yeah, um, there's, a, there's also a, there's, you know, gallery spaces on Young Arts campus and there's different guest curators like Deb Willis, who's really amazing, teaches at NYU. Um, she curated a show, I think that's traveling to New York City that Carlos is in. So I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about this, what it was like to be in this exhibition and yeah um I love the alumni shows it's like I don't know I think I also try to go back to Miami pretty I, I go back every once in a while just to visit and say hi because community so you have a connection to it <laughs> um, now, exactly right? and like there's like I don't know coming of age experience I think you, mm -hmm. you really there's so much to that um but the exhibition created by Deb, who happens to be my chair at NYU, funny enough, um, she didn't know that I was applying to the exhibition. Um, so that's like, I don't know, it's like a wonderful thing for me to like see something like that come full circle because like I yeah. always apply to the alumni shows and, and it's always this experience of like us seeing that we're discussing similar topics as alumni and are all like making work that are similar. And it's like, oh my God, like, hey, here's this community. Hey, so-and-so knows these three other people who did it and like, we're all in the same room and we're all talking about how we have this shared understanding or like we are working through this same concept or these issues like especially um the home re reimagining interiority it's like a group of artists talking about um black visual culture and how it's politicized how it's uh how we are working to reimagine it um like it's all of these topics and it's like you see it across ages it's like you know there are alumni who are 30 plus years old and like doing and and coming to these events and like engaging with these events um and i don't know i think that that is also really important is like getting that intergenerational dialogue amongst an artist like within an artist community that's like not really accessible because there aren't that many opportunities that are just like hey let's give you some support and let's put on a show and let's like, we'll ship your work, you know, like Young Arts is always like, that person's like, well, oh, you can't print it? Like, we got you. Like, you can't, you need money to ship it? Like, you can be reimbursed. Like, it's okay. You know, like, that's like, that type of support makes such a difference when you're an emerging artist, because those are the little things that when you don't have access or when you don't have resources, really, um, you know, help you out.
Yeah, I do want to go to the chat because there's a really great question that comes up quite often. Um, can you submit your Young Arts photographs to other competitions? Yes, absolutely. Young Arts does not hold any exclusive rights to your images or any of the works that you submit or win with or anything like that. So they are yours and solely yours and we do not own them. Okay, someone put, um, I wanted to clarify, but can you be in a photograph where someone else photographs you? Or can you only photograph yourself by propping your camera or taking a selfie? Um, well, I would say I would, uh, I would definitely invest in a tripod if you want to do self portraits. You know, um, I would definitely invest in a tripod. Um, if your if it's your image, um, you want to have like full intentionality in terms of the making. So you don't want to have someone like walking around like taking the pictures of you. But if you you know, focus it if you stay, set every single thing up, but for some reason it's like hard for you to do the timer and get back in your pose. So someone else is like assisting by pressing the button, fine. But as long as you're controlling everything, right? I mean, I think in, in general, you want to think about this idea of like authorship, right? You're not like taking a picture, but you're really like, create, you know, having intention about every single thing in the scene and you're creating an image, right? And so if you create this whole image and you know, just for convenience or for whatever reason, like, you know, you're not using a cable release and you need someone else to help you, insist you, that's fine. It's still your picture because you've created that, but you definitely don't want someone else like walking around, finding the angle. You want to be setting up the exposure and setting up all the technical things within the camera. Um, Carlos, with your self-portraits, did you have any assistance? Yeah, I mean, I think this is also like a political discourse within photography is like how much of an image is your image if you don't take it? Um, but I, mean, I think sure I, mean, I didn't help. take all of hers, right? She had some people. Yeah, there. like, <laughs> you know, but I think I definitely had help. Um, but I'm like a sort of manic when I make images a little bit when it comes to like, I need everything to be like what I imagine. And because of that, I think it's like different because I would set the camera up, hold it in place, then they would take it from my hand. And then I'd be like, okay, now hold it. And then when I like, I would be like, okay, like take it. But that was for two out of the images. Um, because it was a situation where I couldn't set up a tripod. Exactly, that's um, what I'm saying. Like, as long as you're yeah. controlling it, and everyone should want to be that controlling about their pictures, right? Because every single thing yeah. in the frame is going to be read, the point of view, the perspective of the camera, you know, that's such an integral part. I always love the, like, I don't know, I've heard a couple of artists say it, but it's like, I, I create these photos. Um, and I think that's also a, a different way to think about making images is like the act of like, I work within iconography a lot so and like iconology so like using like visual dialogue or like languages and like what things mean to people symbolism um so like i am often putting things in that don't coordinate to like think about what it means for the position of your camera to make a difference like i think that matters mm -hmm. within creating like your own work um other any other questions we can give a few more minutes right for the time people we're happy to answer anything we can the student won last year can they submit again yeah so this is a, another great question um if you were an honorable mention or a merit and are eligible to reapply meaning you meet the age or grade uh, eligibility component yes you can absolutely reapply if you are a finalist who participated in young arts week you are not able to reapply. However, if you were a finalist who did not participate in Young Arts Week for whatever reason, you weren't able to, you can absolutely reapply. And just to speak to that as well, um, if you are a past winner who is eligible to reapply, you automatically get bumped up to the panel round. That means you bypass that first round completely. That is a benefit for uh, past winners as well. So you automatically bypass that first round. You go straight to Corinne and the rest of the panel for them to look over your portfolio. We should also mention that um, if people are struggling, there's like a small application fee, but if people find that- Yes, absolutely. So 
It is $35 per application that you apply for. Um, however, we have made fee waivers easily accessible. Um, it's simply writing a letter stating that you cannot afford the $35. Um, and you can get that from a teacher, a parent. If you're no longer a minor, you can absolutely write it yourself. Um, but it doesn't need to say anything other than I can't afford this. And then it's automatically waived. Your balance is zeroed out within the application. We really want the used to one. <laughs> Do you use one? Great. Yes. <laughs> I never paid a fee for anything during the whole app. College, no, never. <laughs> Don't do it. Get those waivers. <laughs> so long ago, I can't remember, but. <laughs> um, anyone else? Important security message. Your computer has been locked up. Oh, I was uh -oh. IP address was used without your knowledge or consent to visit websites that contains identity. Want to mute yourself, uh, whoever that is? <laughs> unlock the computer, please call support immediately. Please do not attempt to shut down or restart you. Who is that? Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, um, if you are a past winner who is eligible to apply again, do it. I know many people who like apply second times and, and then they end up being finalists because you get you improve yeah no, no. also I we give, we give feedback that's another important part of the application is um you know we also give like written feedback for people who make it Not to, to shut down or restart honorable mention married to data loss and identity theft the computer um, so uh, it's for anybody who makes it to the panel round, but does not get awarded. So not for honorable mentions and merits. Uh, it is for those who do not get awarded in that round. Yeah. Um, sorry. Um, yeah. So anyway, we like give feedback and we have had some of those individuals come back and become winners. So I think the feedback is like very useful and, you know, Again, that's like something that really, I think makes Young Art stand out from other applications. It's just rare to get any feedback on your portfolio. So something Corinne, like this question comes up quite a lot too, and that is past winners um, using the same, some of the same images in their portfolio to reapply. And how do you feel about that? Um, it's okay with me if it was like a, you know, a long-term project. I mean, you know, I work on some projects for years. So, you know, if it's something that you're, a topic that you're really spending a lot of time like photographing and you got some feedback and you feel like that project isn't finished, right? Because it's, when is a project finished? It's a whole big question, right? Um, so if you're still working on it and there's a few iconic pictures that are really important to that project, so as long as it's like transformed and gone beyond that, um, but including, you know, one or two of the ones from your applic other application is completely acceptable for sure. Um, so does the quality of the camera affect judging? Well, I mean, the quality of the, you know, the pictures is important. So, um, you know, if, I just think that like most cameras right now are like pretty decent. Not, I don't know. I remember when I was at Young Arts, I remember them saying like, wow, you took those pictures on that horrible Minolta. And I was like, really? My camera's bad? I didn't even know that, right? But I was like so offended. They were like, couldn't believe that I took the pictures of it. So apparently like, you know, if you do have that vision, I think it's gonna come through no matter what technology you're working with. But if you are, for instance, shooting in low light and you have a camera, and you don't have a tripod and so like again this is not just it's not just the camera it's like a range of factors but like say you can't you know you're upping your iso because you can't put it on the tripod and your camera happens to have a really it has really a lot of noise when you have a high iso right and then your pictures look really noisy like again that has to do with the quality of the picture so it's hard to get through that right if there's a really if it's low in quality that way um so it's like you don't have to have like the most expensive camera on the market <laughs> you know um you really don't like i just think an entry level dslr camera can probably do everything you need don't feel like you need to buy a special camera to apply for this but do um learn how to use whatever camera that you're using um but it's your vision that we're really interested in i just i don't think that the um while the technical quality of the picture is important I don't, I don't think that the camera is really gonna 
hold you back from, you know, getting your portfolios, um, you know, accepted. Does that answer your question? <laughs> if so. I feel like also especially because there's a like collage artists who can win within photo or like people who are working in scenography, like, you know, uh, Kyle who won my ear. Like, I don't know, I feel like it, I don't know. Photo yeah. is really just make images that work. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if like, you know, there's nothing to it. Just make images that you're happy with. And like, if you think you've put your best foot forward, wait and see if you grow, you know, and like, just keep doing it. Cause the camera is not, I have friends who are shooting covers on starter cameras. Like it doesn't make a difference. Also eBay is a great place, <laughs> great place. <laughs> We'll leave it up. We're almost at about eight o'clock. So we'll leave if there's any last questions um, to drop in the chat. Otherwise, if you think of questions outside of this info session, feel free to write to apply at youngarts.org for any application questions. Um, and we'll be happy to answer those for you. Um, there's also a new feature we started last year on our website called Ask an Artist, and that is where you can ask questions and be paired with past winners to talk about what it's like to be an artist and talk to people like Carlos, who can discuss <laughs> how, uh, you know, their winning year went. Uh, and so that is a, also a really great feature. feature. But anything specific to the application and requirements um, and eligibility, you would send that to apply at youngarts.org and we'll drop that in the chat also. Great. And yeah. Well, Neerdra, thank you, Carlos. Um, it was so great to see you in this space. And Pat, I know this to the people all enjoyed hearing about your experience. Um, thanks so much for everyone who came. And I really hope that you guys are eligible and that you definitely apply, even if it's not like you have a few years to apply, maybe it's not the best portfolio, but just like making all those decisions, doing your artist statement, just, you know, applying is like the first hoop that you get through, right? And then you can always make it better next year. But I would say if you're eligible, absolutely apply. And, you know, you, you might be getting feedback from us as well to, in terms of going forward. So is it okay to apply to multiple disciplines? I think yes. it is, you can only pick you have to pick, if say you one in two disciplines, you'd have to decide which one you were to participate in. If you are awarded at the finalist level and you are invited to participate in Young Arts Week, you would have to pick which one you were uh, participating in, yes. Um, but if you are named a finalist in let's say visual arts and photography, and you went to Young Arts Week in photography, uh, your visual arts application would still be a finalist and it would uh, receive a monetary amount of $500. So uh, no matter what, whether you're participating in Young Arts Week in one or the other, the other one would still be a finalist um, portfolio. So yes, you can apply in as many as you'd like. Um, it is, a, the $35 fee does apply to each one, but the waiver, if you get a waiver, it applies to all. So none of, all of them would be free. <laughs> um, I'm a little confused. There's one direct message. Um, I'm a little bit confused. Um, if you get to, if you apply to the application previously last year and you did get to win, can you use the photos you used for your last submission again if the photos are important? Um, well, I think if you're a winner, then you can't win again. But as we mentioned before, I mean, if you didn't, if you didn't win, I wouldn't use all of those pictures again, right? So I would definitely as we said before, like maybe include one or two, but um, further expand and the, the, oh, sorry, didn't win. Okay, <laughs> I was confused about, that. okay. So if you, if you didn't win, um, I wouldn't put the same submission forward, right? If you didn't win with it, I wouldn't do the same thing. But if there's a few pictures and you're still working on that project and you've um, advanced and you know continued the project since you applied, then um, you can include a few, but I would definitely, if you're, I would have at least one of the five, like the other series of five, I would say should be all new work. So definitely don't, don't put like five out of the 10 of the 
say you submit five out of the 10, I wouldn't do that many again. I would really like, we want to see that you're exploring new things and that you're developing your work, but one or two is fine. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for joining. And again, if you have questions outside of this, email apply at youngarts.org. Thank you all. And have a great night. Yeah, thanks everyone. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you guys. Thank you.